So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to Long Island Backstory, where you get the real news that the traditional networks don't report on, especially what we're going to talk about today, because what we're going to talk about today is something that's very near and dear to my heart, and it all ties into divorce and family court, although that's not the, the sole subject of uh, what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is what's called the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experience. I'm just saying that at the beginning to catch everybody's attention so you don't turn it, because all of us have some type of bad childhood experience, but some of them are way, way worse, and what we're going to learn today is the effects that it has Maybe this will give insight to, to yourself, uh, to why things are the way they are in your life and your health, but more importantly, what we can do and why it's so important to prevent kids from going through uh, tra traumatic experience as a child. So when I was looking into doing the show, I wanted to find a guest who really, really knew about the study, and surprisingly, and sadly, actually, a lot of people involved in the family court system never even heard of the ACE study. Really, it's really sad. When you hear the show, you're going to say, wow, how could somebody who's dealing with a child's life not even have heard of what the ACE study was? So I ended up finding my next guest, Ira Scott. Ira Scott works with children, teens, and adults, and couples as a social emotional life coach and is a certified master practitioner of neurolinguistics. That's even a, why would they say neurolinguistics and make it a hard word to say? I don't, anyway, side note. He's a certified hypnotist. Please don't do it with anybody on the show today. A certified trainer of the Havening technique used for victims of trauma and is trained in human needs psychology and strategic intervention. Ira, thank you for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. And, and thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. First of all, let's start off. Tell, tell our guests, our, our, tell the, the audience, what is the ACE study? Okay, so the ACE study, uh, ACE stands for Adverse Childhood Experience. And brief history, uh, started in 19, the 1980s. Uh, there was a doctor in uh, San Diego who was running an obesity clinic. and. Uh, people were losing 100, 200, 300 pounds, and the program was very successful. However, he had an over 50% dropout rate, which he couldn't understand. So he went out and started interviewing those who had dropped out, and he would ask questions charting uh, the history of weight throughout the person's lifetime, starting with, you know, how much did you weigh as a little kid in high school and college and so on and so forth. And then inadvertently, he was interviewing a woman, and he asked, how much did you weigh when you had your first sexual experience? And the woman responded 40 pounds. And he immediately thought she didn't understand the question, it had to be a confusion, so he repeated the question. And again, she said 40 pounds, she burst into tears, and she said when she was seven years old, she was uh, sexually abused by her father. So he had stumbled across something, and ultimately sent out uh, his partners to also do the interviews, making sure it wasn't just because of him, the bias and how he was presenting himself, but they got the same results. And ultimately what they found was that uh, people who were using food as an addiction, became, food became an addiction, but the addiction was not, uh, was treated as if it was a problem when in fact it was really a symptom. And uh, they, they were overeating and making themselves obese because then they felt like they would be unnoticed uh, and also the food gave them comfort. And uh, interview after interview after interview, they found that numerous uh, people who had dropped out had been the victims of uh, childhood sexual abuse. And this led to uh, the study expanding into what is now referred to as adverse childhood experiences. So this study, this ACE study, but this is not some small study. I, I was reading in my research, and because I know people who look at it and say, oh, this is some fringe study. This is like one of the biggest, what was it, the longest study or the, the biggest study in like the history of the United States or something? Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, really considered one of the largest public health studies public health ever, ever done in the United States. And yet, as you alluded to in the beginning, very few people know about it, which is, uh, you know, it's tragic. And again, this isn't something that just some fringe people say. Yeah. We're going to show, show a clip right now, right. and they can show you all these professional doctors 
who, who talk about the study. So let's go ahead and let's roll that clip. Sure. Rob and Vince then began a collaboration that's ultimately become one of the foremost epidemiologic studies of long-term health impacts of uh, child abuse and neglect. I think the most important thing that contributes to the information of the ACE study is simply uh, the powerful nature of when people tell you the truth about their lives and you listen, you understand their life course. It's made me realize how much of what we see in adult medicine is the result of what was present but not seen in pediatrics. ACE has changed the landscape and I want to talk a little bit about how and why they changed the landscape and, and how we can take what we've learned from the ACEs. It's just not a social worker's problem. It's just not a, a psychologist's problem. It's not a pediatrician's problem. It's not a juvenile court judge's problem. It's everybody's. It changed the landscape because of the pervasiveness of the ACEs, the huge number of public health problems, expensive public health problems, depression, substance abuse, sexually transmitted diseases, cancer, heart disease, chronic lung disease, diabetes. As the ACE score goes up, the likelihood of chronic self-acknowledged chronic depression goes up, so that at ACE score four or higher, you're bumping a prevalence of 60%, 6-0% in women, and about 35% in men. This is the percentage of people that ever smoke cigarettes, and here's the percentage of current smokers. Again, like, you know, we could switch the titles on these slides now. You wouldn't know which was from the Kaiser Health Plan and which was a general population sample in Washington. So how do those people, without the conventional risk factors, end up with coronary disease? We have used this over an eight-year period with 440,000 adult patients. I believe that this is the most important thing you can ever do, which is begin to deal with this, this intergenerational transmission of adversity that causes so many problems in our society. So, I mean, you can see there's a lot of doctors and psychiatrists, you know, this is a true, true study that unequivocally proves that childhood experiences uh, cause problems in adult life. A absolutely. I mean, several hundred thousand people over, you know, several, I mean, I guess, what, two decades now, over two decades, it really, I mean, the obesity clinic was in the 80s, the A study really started in the 90s, but several hundred thousand people. and. Although it was Dr. Vincent Folletti, as you saw in the video, who started it, other doctors uh, got involved, and then the uh, Center for Disease Control got involved. So how did you become interested in the ACE study? Uh, great question. So I... That's uh, why I get paid big bucks. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the work that I now do over the past uh, nine, nine years is in the world of uh, coaching, trauma. I work with trauma, PTSD, panic, pathological emotions, and... Uh, in part of my training, especially specific to Havening, which is a psychosensory, psychosensory therapy used for uh, encoded trauma. Uh, that is when I first learned about the ACE study, which was many years ago, and because it involves my work. Little did I know, of course, at the time, how the ACE study would end up uh, becoming part of my life due to my situation with a, uh, a child that was kidnapped at three months old, now is two and a half years old, uh, out of the country. So. I got involved in the family court movement, and as you also alluded to earlier, I was stunned to learn that literally nobody within the movement had ever heard of the ACE study, whether we're, whether we're advocates or attorneys or judges, nobody knew about it. And so part of my role has been to educate uh, people to the ACE study and its implications uh, on children over the uh, over the course of a lifespan, a lifespan, what happens when a child takes an encoded trauma and carries that trauma into adulthood, and what what are the effects of that? And why I find tie this into the family court is because in family court they all tell they, the mantra of the family court, which every judge beats into you, the law guardians. If you read the books, family court they always say it's about what the best, best interests of the children. Now if it's it's actually bullshit. 
But they say it. So if it's truly about the best interest of the children, and I think this study would establish that extended trauma is not good for the children. So why wouldn't we come into court and say, look, mother and father, it's not in your children's best interest. Based on the ACE study, we have proof to prolong this case for two, three, four, five, six. In my case, I was in divorce court for 11 years. My daughter once said, do you realize that more than half my life I've been in family court? And, I, and something that the study shows was that the, it's the prolonged uh, experience that makes it much, much worse, which is also as it relates to PTSD in, in, uh, in war, the people coming back that have been pro, uh, exposed to prolonged experience, right. it truly affects their brain more than a short, bad experience, which we can, we can get over. But if it's truly the best interest, we should be able to go to court and say, Your Honor, it's not in the child's best interest to drag this on. So why don't we come to, what are we fighting about? We're fighting about who gets custody of the children almost all the time. So why don't we share custody 50-50 and get out of divorce court and let the children start to get better. Let them go on with their life. And let's, this, to me, I think a judge who allows a case to go on so long or an attorney, they're guilty of child abuse, black and white, per the A study. Yeah, absolutely. So now I can get off my soapbox. And why don't you tell us, Ira, how do you believe the A study relates to family court and divorce? Well, absolutely it does. And uh, I'm gonna, work my way backwards on what you just said and, and your questions. I mean, ultimately, I think that we all know, uh, for those of us in this movement, and we try to educate the masses how the family court system is set up, and ultimately, when it's all said and done, what is it all about? Money, right? Money and power. Money and power. So I think that uh, judges and or attorneys and other uh, people that are part of the system, even if they knew about the A study, would probably most likely look the other way because when it's all said and done, they don't care. As you said, it's not best interest of the child. It's best interest of how do we bring in the most money. So uh, that's, I think, a big piece of the puzzle. To go to backtrack, though, you know, how is it relevant and what are the effects? Uh, Long-term childhood trauma is damaging to the child's developing brain. And so if you think about fight, flight, and freeze, uh, you have these neurochemical responses. Uh, norepinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol is released into the body. And that's really, really useful and really helpful You know, if we're being chased by a vicious dog. However, if those neurochemicals are turned on too often and or turned on and left on for an extended period of time, they become damaging to the child's developing brain. Physically? Physically, absolutely. So, and then over time, uh, the effects are staggering. I mean, the statistics are off the charts insane. I mean, I'll, I know I have a daughter, so my daughter is already an ACE child, and there are uh, ten, 10 things they look at that they consider an ACE. So it could be physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, and of course one of them that's on the list, which is huge, uh, divorce. And abandonment from one of the parents. Now a child may feel abandoned by a parent who's not in their life. The parent wants to be in their life, but they're not because of alienation, and you know this goes on. Which is very, that's an important I mean, thing to say that the it's child, it's, it's, it's from it's a child's perspective. perspective. A child's perception, a child's perspective. That's an ace, that's a score right there on the ace scale. So, and the more aces a child has, the more problematic it's gonna be. So as an example, my daughter, who's only two and a half years old, as this goes on, as an ace child, statistically, She's more likely to, exponentially, more likely to have a teenage pregnancy, more likely to have at-risk behavior, such as smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, using illegal drugs, more likely, more likely to, you know, right, could be food could be an addiction, any types of addiction, uh, more likely to marry and divorce at a young age, and then get it, it goes into disease, cancer, diabetes. I found that unbelievable. I forget, I mean, yeah, going I mean, back to the, the actual, uh, like the, the rates of heart disease, heart disease, and, and cancer, cancer I mean, uh, it's, it's, high it's blood incredible. pressure, all these things are exponentially more likely to happen uh, on a, to an ACE child as an adult. And when you add it all up and it's all said and done, these children as adults, if they even make it to adulthood, are more likely to die at a younger age. Which, you know what, so now, I wish I knew about this before, but I'm gonna start telling people to go into court, and you know what, put on the record, say, you know what, your honor, Look at the A study, well-accepted study, and it says that 
that this tro prolonged childhood bad experience or this parental alienation or, or the fighting is going to cause permanent harm in my child. Therefore, you won't judge, because you're allowing this to happen, are an right. accomplice. My ex, ex-husband, ex-wife, they are an accomplice to making this happen. They are child abusing. And I would love to get that on the right. record and say, Judge, I'm holding you. I'm holding the law guardian, I'm holding the court, I'm holding my ex responsible. Now you guys might know it, not have the results for 5, 10, 15 years, but you're all damn responsible for what you're doing, for allowing alienation to go on because it's proven that yeah. this is going to have an adverse effect on an adult. And I hope some of these people go back and sue these son of a bitches who caused the problem because now they've been put on notice. This isn't questionable. They can't question the ACE study. This is facts. It's too big. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, I've been uh, myself obviously in court many times. And a uh, quick story, uh, last December, actually, I was in court in New York City and I was waiting to be, you know, called into the courtroom. And there were two attorneys. They were opposing attorneys and they were sitting not too far from where I was sitting having a conversation like they were buddy buddy, you know, golf, golf buddies. And then they started having a conversation about how, like, well, you know, your client shouldn't have called the kid at camp. And, you know, they're just going back and forth. And I'm listening to them. And I finally, I just, I had heard enough. And I stood up and I went over to them. And I said, let me ask you a question. Clearly, you're both attorneys. I said, what can you tell me about the ACE study? And they looked at me as if I was speaking Japanese. And of course, they knew nothing about it. And I said, you know, you two are sitting here talking about children like you're trading baseball cards. You're talking about the lives of two children not to mention their parents and the extended family, the ripple effect. And you know nothing about the ACE study. And I told them, I said, you know what? It's borderline criminal. In fact, you know what? It is criminal. And in my own case, uh, in fact, the last time I was in court at the very end, I said to the uh, judge, I said, I have one last question. And I said, what can you tell me about the ACE study? And the response was, what's that? And I, I left it alone because when I go back to court next time, I'm going to ask the same question. And I'm probably going to get the same answer. But my point will be, Oh, I guess you didn't think that the question I asked was important enough to look into, you know, what that really is. And the courts, you know, again, probably just don't care. The long-term effects, not only, I mean, worst of all, it's loss of life. There's also a cost on society, hundreds of billions of dollars per year. And this goes to health care costs, medical costs, uh, loss of productivity costs because these, you know, they don't show up for work. Uh, criminal justice costs, it goes on and on and on. And so another, I think, very important part of the ACE study and that how I've used it is to educate those who don't think the family court corruption or the corruption that goes on with uh, social services agencies like child predator services, uh, <laughs> CPS, uh, you know, that they, yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane. They think, well, you know, it doesn't affect me. And I, I am trying to educate people to the fact that this does affect you. Even if you're married and you've got your kids and, you know, the white, the house and the white picket fence and everything seems wonderful, you are affected because one, you're funding the corruption through your social, through your paycheck and social security. And we all know the money flow. And to stay on point with the ACE study, it will also affect your children when they grow up. And you think of, you know, generations. You have the baby boomers, now the millennials. So these children grow up as part of the same generation and it affects the world that they're growing up in and the society in which they're growing up in. So, you know, indirectly, all children will be affected by children that had ACEs when they were young, you know, when they were kids. And, and, so. and this is, and I think part of the, uh, the ACE study or part of an ACE event would be being raised without a father. And I think Absolutely. we're seeing this big time now when we look at the incarceration rate, and yeah. I'm not gonna get into the exact statistic because people might argue, but it's somewhere between 80 and 90% of men in prison were raised without a father. That's right. I mean, that's, you that's, don't have to be right. a genius to right. say there's a problem. We're raising a generation because we, with the, uh, with being, there's another whole issue about Title IV defunding, where we encourage people to be raised without a father with this fight for, for custody and the right. divorce rate being high. So we're raising a generation that's got huge traumatic experiences. God knows what this next generation is, is, is going to bring of all these people who have been, you know, uh, children of horrible divorces. Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately what the courts are doing and what the social service agencies are doing, pulling kids and putting them into foster care when there's no reason to, in most cases, ultimately what they're doing is they're creating ACE kids. Absolutely. And I think, we well, you know, going back a little bit, but, but one of the things that you said was that the judge didn't know what the ACE study was. I think they don't want to know what it is. 
I, so, I, I agree. Because how do you go right. to bed at night knowing it? And also now you have culpability. Right. So what I'm telling the people who are watching, I'm telling the attorneys who are watching, now that I'm educated on the age study, I would bring it up in court and put it on the record and say, Your Honor, law guardian, ex-spouse, the age study says that children who are product of a divorce that's carried on too long and filled with traumatic experiences, X, 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 and X will probably happen. Knowing that, how can you let this go on? Just put it on the record. Maybe make yep. them, I don't know how it'll work. I'm not telling you it's gonna be the magic, but I would like to put, the, I would put it on the record. Make them worry about yeah. what's gonna happen. I agree uh, 100%. I think that's definitely something that all people that are in court. Put it on the record. Put it on the record. Make them think about make it. Them, make them go, ma maybe ma the judge will go home and Google it. Yeah, make them think about it. And ultimately it's on the record that right. you're contributing to uh, an adverse childhood experience for the child and, and then go into what is the cost gonna be on not only this child's life, but on society. Again, billions of dollars per year and loss of life. Absolutely. Let's just, so. uh, for a second, because people who are watching, not everybody's involved in divorce, although most people either they are or their childhood. What are some other adverse childhood uh, experiences other than divorce? What, what would well, the other ones be? Uh, physical abuse, verbal abuse, uh, Verbal abuse meaning parents who are who were yelling or a third party. Uh, it could be either or because trauma can be encoded by something that you're actually like. So the child is being yelled at can be an encoded trauma. Uh, a child witnessing their parents fighting, especially if there's physical abuse involved, uh, that can become an encoded trauma. So trauma can be encoded. What about bullying, Ira? That could be absolutely. I would think that would be yeah, a big one. Absolutely. And there's a lot of focus on bullying now, thank yep, God, absolutely. for trying to stop the bullying. But I yep. think this relates, and for those of you who are watching who have a child who's being bullied, perhaps go into school with the A study and hold everybody responsible for, for, for yeah, what's going to happen. I mean, happen. absolutely. And, and quite frankly, you know, obviously any child that's bullied needs help, needs attention, needs to be cared for. And I've said from the very, on, the very beginning when I got involved in the work that I do that ultimately though, the children that need the, the attention and the help and the guidance are the kids that are doing the bullying because they're coming to school with anger, which is suppressed sadness. They're coming from a bad situation in their home, whether their parents are fighting, there's domestic violence going on, they're witnessing it, it's bad energy in the home. And these kids come to school and they have all this anger inside of them, all this pain inside of them, they don't know how to deal with it or how to handle it. And, how, and then it just, the bubble bursts and they end up picking on you know, some other kid. So, I mean, it's, all these topics are, are intertwined. They're all connected and the, again, cost is huge. Does the age at which and I, I didn't read the whole study, but so does the age at which a child experiences an adverse childhood experience, does that make a difference on the end result? For example, is, is a two-year-old not as bad as a three-year-old? Is it worse when a child's a teenager? And at what age does it stop? I mean, at 18. Yeah, okay, that's an excellent question. And so the answer is where it starts is typically around age four, uh, because the part of the brain that is responsible for declarative memory is the hippocampus. And the hippocampus, which is part of the lim limbic system, doesn't essentially turn on, so to speak, until age four. And it's in, within the limbic system that uh, trauma is encoded. And the part of the brain where the trauma is encoded is called the amygdala. So it starts at about age four. And from there, there is no when does it stop. Because what happens, and you, you heard in the video, uh, one of the doctors was saying, you know, ACE has changed the landscape. So what did he mean by landscape? What he was referring to is it changes the landscape of the child's brain because of the neurochemicals that I mentioned earlier, earlier, cortisol, norepinephrine, adrenaline, that's being flooded into a child's uh, brain during a child adverse childhood experience. So these, these chemicals change the landscape of the brain in that as the child is getting older, they become more susceptible to additional encoded trauma. There's essentially four requirements for a trauma to be, for, an, for something to be encoded as a trauma. One is you have to have an event, something happens. Two is um, meaning. So, you know, you have the, you give meaning to something, you know, what, what does this mean in my life? And when there's an attachment and there's a sense of loss, abandonment, like a parent leaving a child, maybe not 
you know, the well, child, again, pers away. right, per perspective from the child is, you know, parent left, not understanding the child's being alienated by another parent and or the system. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's meaning. So you have event, meaning, there's perceived inescapability. Well, what is a little kid gonna do you know, if there, this is going on, there's nowhere to go. There's, per, there's perception is there's no escape from this. And then lastly is landscape. And so the more abuse or trauma that the child is exposed to at a young age makes the child more susceptible to encoded trauma as an adult. So as an example, you know, look at 9-11. You could have two people that were in the towers, they got out, they survived, and one person is traumatized and the other person isn't. Why is that? And part of it goes back to the landscape of the brain. And ACEs, as the doctor said in the video, ACEs change the landscape of the brain. No, we're running short on time, but and I, and I was fascinated when I was reading the study, but there's something that I, I took a quote, I have over 40, so I gotta take my readers on here. But I wanna read this quote because I wanted to make sure I got this on the show. It said, research over the last two decades confirms that children carry the effects of childhood experiences into adulthood. The challenges they face in school, life, and ultimately the state of health are often symptoms of toxic stress. Toxic stress, unlike manageable stress, refers to the long-term change in brain architecture and organ systems that develop after extreme, prolonged, and repeated stress goes untreated. Exposures to ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, may put our children at higher risk for learning difficulties, emotional problems, developmental issues, and long-term health problems. My question is, if now this is universally accepted in the medical community, how can the family courts let cases go on for years, let allegations of false abuse go on, allow parental alienation to go on, and in many cases in the court, they, they promote it by, by doing nothing. Right. Wouldn't they be committing child abuse? And certainly, it's not in the best interest of the children. Absolutely not, and again, I think it just all goes back to money. Uh, there's a great article, that you, can, you know, if you Google, uh, just put in a study and medical school, there's a great article about a, a doctor wrote, and she writes about the most important thing I wasn't taught in medical school, about adverse childhood experiences. And remember the obesity clinic, right? The food became an addiction. And, you know, in the past, addictions were treated as, that's the problem, like a, a drug is a problem, and it's not. Addictions, whatever the addiction is, whatever the, the drug of choice is, is not the problem, it's a symptom of a problem. It's a symptom of an encoded trauma. Well, Ira, thank you very much. I mean, there's so much information on here and I'm, I know this is gonna be a popular show. Uh, people are gonna go back and you can watch it again if you're watching it on TV right now. You can go to YouTube and Google the Long Island Backstory A study and you'll see the show. You can watch it again and get some information on, on my guest and about the study. But in conclusion, what, I, what I'd like to say is for those who are watching it in the legal profession, what's the answer? You know what the answer is? The answer is take the fight out of family court, a presumption of 50-50 shared parenting. Take away this thing where they burden one parent right. with so much uh, financial debt that they can't afford to do it. Take the fighting out of the court. When somebody gets an order of protection and it's, and it's, it's false, prosecute the person. Stop right. these orders of protection. Because let me tell you, an ACE, an adverse childhood experience, is damn sure a person being hauled out of their house, a mother or a father, in handcuffs. Absolutely. Because especially when they know it's not to, not being true. So we got we have to go to shared parenting. Ira, right, there's so much more I want to talk about, no. but again, Google the A study, get this information, yeah. share educate the video, yourself, yeah. and get educated and use it in court. I'm Gary Jacobs, and thank you for joining us at Long Island Backstory. Thank you, Ira Scott. Yep, thank you for having me.
Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untodd-like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man.